Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to WordCamp. My name is Vivia. I'll be introducing your speakers. I first would like to acknowledge that we are on the unceded and ancestral territory of the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the tsleil Nation. On behalf of us all, I give thanks to our indigenous brothers and sisters for use of their land. This afternoon's talk is being given by Ryan Welcher, and it is extending WordPress with slot fill. Please give a hand to Ryan. Thank you, and thanks for hanging out while we figured out all of the issues. Okay, I think this is going to work. If it doesn't work, we're just going to talk about other WordPress stuff for the next half an hour. So, anyways, thank you for coming. I really appreciate you all taking time to come listen to me ramble on about slot fill, which is something that I am very passionate about, and I've uh, done a bunch of talks on it, and I've written some of the slot fills. Anyways, let's get into it. So uh, the first question you might have is, what is slot fill? <clears throat> so at a high level, slot fill is an extension paradigm that allows developers to add elements to existing UIs in WordPress, specifically the post edit screen and the site edit screen. Um, you register plugins containing content or fills, and they will be displayed in a specific location or what are referred to as slots in the UI, wherever that is. <clears throat> Items are rendered outside of their element tree. So if you're familiar with React portals, it works very similar, where you put something over here and it actually renders out over here somewhere. This is, this is the imaginary website in my head. So. <laughs> Currently there are 13 locations or slots available, and uh, we're always trying to get more in there. So. Oh, speaking to the mic. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to be married to the podium here. Uh, slots are location-based, so if you want to compare them to, to uh, something that most WordPress developers know, it, it, you, could re you could compare them to an action in the Hooks API, in the sense of um, they don't work in any at, at all the same way. But but Hook, or sorry, actions are I'm sorry, yes, actions are location-based, and they usually render in the order in which things are registered. So let's look at a, a slot fill system overview. So a slot fill system at its core, um, in the context of WordPress, anyways. Uh, consists of three components. We have uh, what's called the slot component, and it's uh, wherever this component is rendered. Um, any fills with the same name, which um, will have their content rendered in that location. So it, it accepts three props. We have the name prop, the fill props object. So if you wanted to have information that you want to pass to the fills that are getting their content rendered here, you would do that via, via fill props. And there's a third one called bubbles virtually, and that just handles uh, event bubbling behavior, depending on what you're doing, you may want to have it bubble virtually through React or through the regular DOM. <laughs> so here is a, an example, a code example, of what a slot looks like. It's a very, very simple component. Let's leave it up for a second. So the second part is the fill component. So the contents of this fill component, basically the items wrapped in the fill component, uh, will be rendered in the slot location of the same name, uh, regardless of where this fill is rendered. So it, it only accepts a single prop, which is the name of the slot this fill is targeting. So if we, if we see what a, uh, an example of that would look like, it looks like this. So it only has a single property. Now everything, does this? Oh yeah, it does. Everything inside of here is what will be rendered inside the fill. <coughs> so the third one is the, thought, the, the <laughs> slot fill provider component. This whole talk is full of really hard things to say many times in a row. So you'll. I'm sure I'll stumble. So this is the magical glue that connects fills with their slots. So both the slot and the fill components need to be wrapped by this component at some level. It doesn't have to be immediately wrapped. It, it can search its children and its children's children all the way down the, the tree to find these slots and fills, and then it, can, it, it connects them at runtime, if you will. Um, and it, it accepts no, no props, and there's nothing to really see because it's, it's just a named com, uh, component. So, <coughs> pardon me. So basic slot fill system, uh, we're going to take our application or component and we're going to wrap it inside of the slot fill provider. Then a named slot is rendered or exposed somewhere inside that ap application. A fill with the same name is rendered somewhere else. And then that, that fill, its content will be rendered inside the slots, or sorry, in the slots location. So if we look at some sort of, this is my very simple application here just to get a sense of how this works. Slot fill provider wraps everything. My awesome app is an app of stuff. And then I have a slot. And then below it, I have other components. Then I have a fill at the very bottom. This is not going to be very impressive because it will just move it up one line. But basically, what happens if we had sort of a graphical representation of this? 
We have our slot, slot fill provider wrapping our, our app UI. On the left side, we have a slot. On the right side, we have two fills. When this renders, press the wrong button, all of the fill contents get moved over into the slot location. So that's kind of how it does it, sort of. So how does WordPress do it? Well, WordPress does it with those three components, but there's another level here because everything that we've just seen is sort of a, a closed system. Um, and we need, as extenders, to be able to get our code inside of Gutenberg or inside of the block editor. And we can't recompile JavaScript for the, for the Gutenberg uh, plugin or for, the, or for core every single time. So we need to add two more pieces. Um, <laughs> excuse me. The first, uh, sorry, what are we doing here? So we have two new pieces to the puzzle. The first piece is a function called register plugin. So this function provides an, uh, an entry point to the slot fill system by accessing this global array that contains all of the plugins. And you'll see what a plugin is in a second. And then the, the, the next piece is a plugin area component. So this piece is a hidden component that's buried deep in the bowels of the block editor. And it accesses that same global array and renders those fills inside of it. And uh, we'll see, so, so that's how we get it into the system. So register plugin is part of the WordPress plugins package. It takes a number of params, uh, or parameters. The first one is the name, which is the string identifying what this plugin is called. The next one is a settings object, which it's got, currently there's three properties that it supports. Uh, the most important one is render. So render will be the component. It, it expects to be a, a functional component and whatever you pass there is what's rendered inside the, like that's how you build your fills. You can pass an icon, uh, which can be either like a string to a dash icon or like a, an SV, basically a, a, a React like JSX icon, that's what I'm saying. And the, th the last one is scope. So scope is new-ish. Um, and when you do, if you define the scope here, it will only render in the plugin area that has that same scope. Now currently, the plugin areas in the site editor and the post editor are not scoped. So if you add a scope there, it won't render in where you're th where you're thinking it's supposed to. This was added after that was um, the those two screens were sort of made. It's really great for custom plugin areas, which are sorry, uh, custom slot fill systems, which I'll, sh I'll I'll show you in a minute. So this is <coughs> pardon me. This is a, an example of how you would use it. So we have our example plugin is the uh, the the name of our plugin, and, the, and then we have an object. This is a component that I've built out somewhere else. You just have to put the name of the component in there, and then whatever icon we want. So the plugin area component is the next piece, and it renders all register, all the registered plugins inside a hidden div element. Uh, it, it, it has a scope prop, like we just talked about. So if you define a scope here, your plugin must target that same scope when rendering. And then uh, an, on an, an on error function, which just handles er errors. Um, and unless you're building something custom, you're probably not going to use this component. Um, but anyway, so this is what it looks like. Plugin area, it's got two props, pretty pretty straightforward stuff. So uh, here's an overview of kind of how the WordPress, like the actual WordPress system does it. So slot fill provider wraps an editor provider component. The editor provider component just creates a block editor and then that is sitting inside the post edit screen and, and the site edit screen. Uh, various slots are exposed inside of a layout component. Fills are registered using the API. Fills are rendered inside the plugin area and then fill content is rendered in the associated slot. So this is sort of just a pseudo representation. This is kind of how it looks. There's a lot more going on in there. Um, in 6.4, this is going to change because I believe they're going to nest slot fill provider inside of the editor provider. Functionally, it won't mat matter, but this, I'll have to update this slide when 6.4 comes out. <laughs> um, so here's a visual representation of what that looks like. So over here, we register a plugin. It's in this sort of global list. The plugin area component grabs everything out of there renders it in here. We have our two slots in here, and then when it runs, all that stuff goes in there. It's pretty, pretty straightforward, I guess. So, so far we've seen really basic slot fill examples, and the actual slot fills that are available to us are, are more complicated than, than that. Um, they're named components, and they usually contain some other functionality, or they have uh, in, inner components. Some of them respond to fill props. Some of them do all, all kinds of stuff. So. Um, and this is, this is an example of the plugin post status info slot. Um, and this is actually how it's, how it's working. So you can see what we're doing here is taking the fill um, and then we're putting a panel row in there. And then any, any children that sit, that are, are wrapped inside this component 
get rendered here, and then we're, expose, we're exposing the slot on a dot slot property. And so the, the slot and the fill are in the same component, and that's where we get the name slot fill. Um, and so to expose that slot, uh, this, is, this is, again, a kind of a cut down version of the post status panel on the left hand side of, of the block editor. Um, what we do is we just we, we import the plugin post status info component and then we expose the dot slot property. And then um, if you want to register a fill for that, we would import register plugin from WordPress plugins. We'd import plugin post status info from the WordPress edit post package. We, and then we, I love this pointer, it's awesome. And then uh, we have uh, the name of our plugin and then our render function. It can be like an inline sort of functional component like this or it can be an external component that you use somewhere else. And then we wrap the content that we want to render in the name of the slot fill. And that's, a, that's it. And then what that looks like is this. So this is, the, this is literally where that would go and how, how that would look. So it's a very, I'm sure there's lots of plugins that, 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 that put stuff in there. So um, currently, there is uh, nine slots available in the edit post screen. So I'm going to show you an example of each one. Um, and the, one of them, this main dashboard plugin is still, sorry, this main dashboard button is still experimental, so use it with, with caution. But uh, the first one that we're going to talk about is plugin pre published panel. So this one appears in the pre published sidebar. So when you hit publish for the first time, you get that little sidebar that says, Are you sure? Maybe you want to add some categories, that stuff. So that's where that sits. Um, it has a couple of props, a class name, so you can add, add, add classes, the title to be displayed at the top of the panel, and whether or not it's open initially. So if we were to register a slot for that, we would, again, import the register plugin function, and then we pull in the slot that we're looking for. And then um, it's all sort of the same. I'm probably not going to walk through each one, but we'll just we'll, we'll show an example. And then uh, when that renders, it looks like this that down here at the bottom. So in, in this one, I, I, I've added a custom icon here. Because um, I'm a developer advocate, so avocado is my thing, I guess. And uh, yeah, and so the, the next one we'll talk about is the post publish panel. It's exactly the same thing, but it shows up after you said, yes, I actually do want to publish. Um, it's got the same properties, basically class name, title, and, and initial open. Um, code looks very similar. You're going to sense a theme. The code is very similar. The thing that changes is this name and the stuff that's rendered in here. So it's very, 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 um, the, the code is very uh, similar across the board here. But, um, and I'll, I'll leave this up for a little, like, just long enough for it to be awkward so people can actually read it. Um, and so this would be uh, what that looks like in, in production, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the plugin more menu item. So this renders a menu item in the plugins group in, mo in the more menu drop down. Yep, these descriptions are hard, <laughs> are, they're hard to say with words. I'll have to show you the example here. It can be used as a button or a link depending on the props provided. So if you, uh, so it, it accepts the H an href. So this is um, when href is provided, then the menu item is represented as an anchor rather than a button. Again, we have icon, we have on click, so you can tell it what you want it to do when this is clicked. And then there's um, down here, there's this like the spread operator, and what this means is basically any other props that you pass will be um, passed down to the underlying button that our menu item component. So uh, yeah, so you can style that appropriately or you can add the, the props that that component takes. And this is an example of that. So this one we're just going to be linking out to the slot fill reference guide on the developer.wordpress.org. And uh, that'll render in here. And you click that and it'll take you to that page. Uh, bl uh, plugin block settings menu item. They're all mouthfuls. It, <laughs> it doesn't get better. <laughs> It adds a new item in the block settings menu on any allowed block. So when you're when you have the toolbar above a block, or if you've if you've pinned it to, to the top of the page, that's where that would appear. Um, so you can you can specify what blocks should this appear on. Again, we have icon, we have a label, which is the menu item text, and then the on click. Again, what do you want to do when you click on this? This is the example here. So we're only allowing this on on the core paragraph block. This is the label, which I should be escaping, but I didn't. And then when I click it, I just alerts click. So and when that renders, it, it renders in here. So I've clicked this three button menu, this appears, I click on that and it doesn't alert. It's the most useless slot on the planet. <laughs> well, this implementation is the most useless, not the slot itself. Uh, the plugin sidebar one, this is probably the one that most people would be the, 
probably the most familiar with because this was one of the first ones that really got heavy usage. I think Yoast was the first one. Yoast or anyways, it's so it's um, this renders a sidebar when activated. It sits in the top right hand corner, um, and when you click it, it, it opens a panel and there's stuff in that panel. Um, so it takes a, a name, which is identifying the sidebar, which is good so you can open it and close it. Uh, a class name, a title is pinnable, which is whether or not you can, in the top right, there's, there's a button that will sit there. And you can, if, they, if pinnable is false, it won't show up in there and you have to get out of it a different way. And then again, the icon. So the example here looks like this. So what, I, the, what I'm doing here is I'm making this a bit more complicated. So I have a plugin sidebar, but then the contents will appear in the flyout. And so, so it doesn't sit right against the edges. I wrap this inside of a panel body, so it looks a, a little bit nicer. And then when that's, uh, I'll just leave that up for a second, actually. And then when that is rendered, it looks like this. So I've clicked on the avocado, and it pops open, and then the fill contents is, is in here. That's the title that I've set, and this button makes it pinnable, basically. So if I turn that off, this disappears. Um, one thing that this does now that it didn't used to do, and there's, I'll, I'll talk about it in the next slide. <laughs> so this, this is the menu item that's associated with that particular uh, plugin. So it used to be that you had to do the sidebar and the menu item separately, and now they've, they've, they've changed that. So you may not always be needing to use this particular one, but um, it, so this targets the sidebar. So if we look at back here, we have a name in this, this one. And so to target that, we would need to pass that as the target to this particular slot fill. Does that make sense? I feel like, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, and then the, the icon again. And so here is, um, so this is an example of doing both. So down here, we're registering the sidebar and I've given it a sidebar name, or sorry, the name is sidebar name. And then I have my more menu item that is going to target that. This is the text and I, I absolutely left that in there on purpose. And uh, uh, <laughs> so when that is clicked, it will basically toggle the sidebar, or sorry, the plugin sidebar with the same name op opened and closed. So clicking this button basically opens this. Cool, okay. Uh, plugin document setting panel. This is my favorite, because I wrote it. <laughs> but uh, uh, so this renders items below the status and, avail and availability panel. Um, this was in direct relation to the lack of meta boxes that you could register inside of uh, the post edit screen when Gutenberg first came out. All the meta boxes were down at the bottom. You had to do it with PHP. So this was added so people could insert stuff in there. Um, it, it takes a name, which is identifying this panel. That's really useful if you want to programmatically open and close panels. Uh, a class name, a title to be shown at the top, and then again, an icon. Um, so this is an example of that. Uh, we've got our name, title, our, our, our class name. Um, oh, I should mention, and I, I don't think I have yet, but the icon down here um, can be inherited sometimes, and sometimes it, it doesn't. So not all slots have icons. In fact, I think this one's been updated to no longer support the icon, because the rest of them don't have icons. So just ignore that avocado. Um, so this is basically creating a panel in here. So you can add as many, or well, you can add as many as you want. Uh, the main dashboard button, this is experimental. Please use it with, with caution as everything in WordPress is experimental. Everything that is experimental in, in, in WordPress, you need to be aware of using it in production because things can change, it could break, and so on and so forth. But this allows replacing the, the, the default button in the, when you're in the block editor and it's full screen and that little WordPress icon in the top left corner, this allows you to replace that with whatever you want. Um, and uh, so, I'm doing bad things and exper importing experimental stuff. So I've got a, the main dashboard button and then I've, I, I'm using this full screen close mode icon. Sorry, full screen mode close component with my icon of avocado. It looks like that. So if you were to click that, it would take you out of the, out, out of the edit experience into back to the WP admin. Okay, so the site editor has four component or slot fills currently. Um, we just got a new one in 6.3, which is plugin template sanity, uh, setting panel. Uh, the, they are all exactly the same. They are just, well, I shouldn't say, the first three are exactly the same, just imported from a different package. So they, they look the same, they appear in the same place, and they work the same. They're just in a different location in, inside the admin. And uh, so this, but the last one is the template plugin settings panel. 
And so this one appears, it's very similar to the document setting panel in the post edit screen. Um, there, uh, and so, man, I gotta, I gotta pick up the base here. Um, but it, it just appears in here. But this is in the template editor of the site edit screen. Down here at the bottom. Okay, so you're probably saying that's it, I want more. Well, you can't have more, we just need some help. So go, to, go there, open PRs, talk, open issues, talk about your use cases. Um, this is going to be very, very similar to the way that like hooks and filters and actions and all that were added sort of in WordPress core. Enough people complain about something being missing and it gets added. Enough people add some hacks to get something in and people start to say, oh, that's something that, that we should add. So let's do that. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about creating slot fills, custom slot fills, and I'm trying to go really fast because I'm gonna show a fun demo at the end. So to create a slot fill, you, you import a function called, uh, a, called create slot fill from the com WordPress components. And what that's going to do is allow you, it'll give you a fill and a slot component and we, we all know how those work now. <coughs> so once we have those, we're, we're gonna create a, a, a component, a named component that is gonna be the same name as this parameter. So this parameter is the name property for the slot and the fill, that's how they get connected. So best practice is to name the, slot, the component the same as this parameter and then we're going to return our fill with wrapped in, in the children, and we're going to create a dot slot property and assign it the slot component, and then we're gonna e export that. Oh, and I realized I just kinda went through all that, that slide. So in, in our fake settings screen, we've got a panel body, a panel, a panel body, we've got a panel row, and then I'm exposing this slot here. So if I wanted to just render something inside of that, we, we use render plugin, or sorry, register plugin, we pass the render component. Again, this is, code looks very similar, it's just the names have changed and then that would render something like this. <clears throat> so if we want to use fill props, we would, we would expose our slot normally, and then we would add a fill props object, and then put whatever information we, we, we wanted in there. This is really handy if you want to get like the current user or the context of the page that you're on. And so, uh, yep, so once that's been exposed, we're gonna register a plugin in the same fashion that, that we have. Now this gets a little bit more complicated because this is actually a function that receives the props, and then we're just, this is a render, this is like an implicit return in JavaScript, so this will just return this, and it's gonna do a p tag, and it says, I was past fill props, and it's gonna say the props.message, which is that what I put in there, yeah, yeah. And then when that renders, we say, I was past fill props, and then it, it sends me the message in there. So you can also customize your fill structure. Um, so this is an example of um, uh, the, the, the structure around the, I'm sorry, yes, the structure around the fill is, is customized. So in, in this case, I'm going to build a button and um, I'm gonna expose the slot like an, uh, we do normally. Then I'm going to say customize fill structure and I'm gonna put some text in there. And I'm doing three of them, button one, two, three. When this renders, it's going to render a button for me and it's gonna take the fill contents and make it the, the text that's in the button. It's a very contrived example, but um, yeah. And then there's a, a custom slot structure. So um, to do that, we're, um, we're customizing our, our slot component here. So we're wrapping slot. This is a function again, it takes all the fills and I'm just gonna say, if it's got fills, then I'm going to wrap them inside of a code uh, tag. Otherwise, I'm not gonna return anything. And then I expose the slot again. And then I say, this will be rendered in a code tag. And so when, I, when this is rendered, it looks like it's rendered inside of code tag. So you can customize both as well. So in this example, I'm basically building an unordered list. So on each, each fill will, will have an LI. Each slot, or the slot, I, I should say, will, will be wrapped, wrapped in the un, unordered list tag. And um, again, we're exposing. So I'm going fast, so if you have questions, I'd be happy to answer. <laughs> Um, and then this is the first item, this is the second item. And then when that renders, we, we get a list. So how much time do I have? Five, perfect, okay, I'll slow down a little bit because this is the fun part. <laughs> so we can do a slot fill outside of the editor. And uh, so I have an example where I have a, a dashboard widget that supports slot fill. And so this is just the boilerplate code that I'm using to um, register a dashboard widget. All I'm doing is outputting a div with an ID so I can target that. Um, and now what I'm doing here is I've created my slot fill. So I have a fill with a section and a div and the children in there. So this is just creating the slot fill. 
The dashboard widget is wrapped inside of a slot fill pr uh, provider because we need that to make this work. Um, I have an H4 that's saying this widget sort of serves no purpose. I'm exposing my slot here, and then I'm adding my plugin area down at the bottom with a scope for dashboard. And then I'm just using React to render the dashboard widget into the uh, div that I defined. So I'll just leave that up for a second. So now I'm going to register a plugin. So I import the register plugin from the, the plugins API, and then I, I use my widget. I put in a component called Bearded Wonder, and then I'm targeting my dashboard scope. So this becomes important because if there was multiple, so say, say I had three different dashboard widgets and each one had its own scope because I, don't, I, I want to target widget one with some stuff and widget two with something else. If these weren't scoped, anything that's registered will be placed in all, all of them. So that's where the scope comes in. It just, you know, makes it, 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 it creates a context for your particular in information. And so that's what this would look like. This is, <laughs> this is the best GIF on the internet. Uh, yeah, and it serves, no, it serves no purpose, but they get a really <laughs> ridiculous giggle. Anyways, uh, okay, and so if all else fails, you can still use portals. So React Portals, is everyone, show of hands, who's from, f familiar with React Portals? Sort of, okay. So React Portals is kind of what this is based off, but what you can do is you can, in your React application, you can say, this random piece of HTML is now part of my app, and I want you to put something in there. It's like a magical portal that you can send something to. And so, uh, George Mamadashvili, who is a sponsored contributor for GoDaddy, I, I believe, wrote this really cool example um, to basically add this little smiley button to a place that there is no slot. So if you need to, you can do this. Use it, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, so be careful, but um, that's, that's, that, that's that example. Okay, so that is it for me. You can steal all the code that you've seen, including um, uh, George's example is available at this link or this QR code. Please feel free to grab it, steal it, fork it, use it as, as your own. Um, and it's got all the examples that you saw today and some other examples as well. So there's a lot, a lot going on in there. So thank you. Um, you can find me on Twitch, YouTube, and Discord as Ryan Welcher Codes. Uh, so come hang out. I'm uh, Ryan Welcher on X, Twitter, whatever it's called now, and either Welcher, Ryan Welcher, or some variation of that on most Slack channels. So any questions, I guess? Thank you. I know I went really fast, so I'm happy to explain anything in further detail. I'll reshow slides. Questions? Uh, just curious, I'm not super familiar with all the components involved, but is it possible when you're using slot fill to have it provide context based on content in the editor? So the use case I'm thinking of mm -hmm. is in the pre-published slot fill component you had. Yep. If someone has imaged in their content, yes. have something say, hey, did you put in alt text for accessibility as a reminder before they yes. hit publish? You can absolutely do that. Um, I actually wrote something that did that. Um, yes. is I, it's a pre-published checklist. So one of the cool things about slot fill is that you don't just need to put components in there. You can put any other sort of JavaScript you want. So if you have, like, so my initial iteration of this pre-published checklist did that exactly. It checked, it did a word count. It did this check to see if you had anything that was, like any categories that weren't uncategorized and whether or not you added a featured image. So when, this is a bit more advanced, but when you get in there, you have access to all of the, the WordPress data stores that are in there. So any information that, that Gutenberg, that like the APIs, the, basically the, the Redux stores have available, you can get access to. So you can absolutely do that. And I would recommend not doing it inside of the, the pre-published panel because it's a setting that can be turned off. So mm. you, 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 but you can still you can still do it in the slot fill because the plugin area is rendered somewhere in the bowel. So that code is running even though that particular slot is not rendered. So that's a that's a hack that I've done a few times just to get my code in there and then I deal with the UI elements later. Um, the later it, iteration of that plugin, it's it's on it, it's on my GitHub. So go and go and take a look. Um, it doesn't do anything with the pre-published panel. In fact, it runs entirely and it disables being able to press the publish button until those things are, whatever you've defined, are um, sort of are satisfied. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, anytime. I, I can show you the repo after this too, if that's easier, yeah. Questions, anyone?
Does anyone want to see anything again? I went really quick, so feel free to say, Brian, just show me something because you talk too fast. Yes, absolutely. Right there. So uh, I, I'm trying to understand where where you put this in the code. Um, okay. So that's a really in a, in a, in, a, in in so the way I have done, for example, custom um, blocks is that you specify the f the, what goes into the various fields inside this edit function that it's, mm -hmm. um, is it, and I find this very annoying because it shouldn't be there, right? It should okay. be separate. And is, uh, are, are, are we moving away from this kind of uh, um, firing the, 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 the actual render? Where does the render happen so that it's available and interacts with uh, the block or other? Okay, so there's t I think there's two questions in there. Okay. So, okay. Uh, to answer your I, to answer your question, the 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 register plugin calls that we've been looking at that should be enqueued in a separate file, the same way that you would enqueue regular JavaScript. So, but just on the block editor asset source. And I, I don't know if I actually showed that. So that's a really good point that I'll update. Um, does that answer your first question about how to get it in? Or well, the, the registration. The question is how do you how do you initiate any changes to this as a result of input or uh, the fact that the oh, block has the been activated, et cetera? Um, you would have to do that inside of the component that you're, that you're rendering. So the render, com the render property takes the, the component and essentially renders that as its own JSX component hidden inside that plugin area. Okay. So it's a standard React com Component, so you don't just need to output JSX in there. Mm -hmm. You can have calls to use state, use effect. You can do all that stuff in there and respond to anything that's happening in, inside of Gutenberg. Mm -hmm. So if you want to say, say I don't know what you do. So say you you have a document setting sidebar panel, and you want to um, have some kind of indicator that uh, let's use word count. So you need to have a thousand words on this page. So you can render that slot. And then you would use like the use select, the, the data stores that are available to access um, the word count that's, that, that Gutenberg is keeping track of, or at least being able to pull the, the word count out. And then you can respond to those changes and update your UI accordingly. Does that, does that sort of help? Okay, so it is actually rendered inside of the plugin component, or sorry, the plugin area component. So your render happens there, you just can't see it. Um, but all that, code is running regardless of the fact that, that you can't see it. I feel like I'm not quite answering your question, but you, no, well, we can talk after if you want to. Yeah, if that's easier. Anybody else have a question? Yep. Sure. You just want to see the GIF again, don't you? <laughs> Come on. Uh, can I just, can you just show the code? Thank you. Sure. Um, so there's a couple pieces for it. Uh, there is register, oh, sorry. This, this is standard registering a dashboard stuff that work, like if you wanted to register a dashboard widget, that's the function that you would call. Um, which, which code do you want to see, or uh, just all of it? I just, I, I, I think that's, that could be useful for um, just displaying relevant or relevant information. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So this is just creating a custom slot fill. So um, maybe is, um, and this is the dashboard widget. This is probably what you're more concerned with, right? So again, up here, we have to make sure we're wrapping everything inside of the slot fill provider. If you don't do that, none of this will work. Um, and then you need to just put the plugin area somewhere. Because it, it gets rendered literally inside of a div that's hidden. So, or it's display none or hidden, I can't remember. So, and then expose your slot wherever you, you need to be. Now, this can be way more complicated markup. You can do really complicated stuff in here and just put the slot in where, where you want. And then at this point, the only thing that you have to do is you're going to register your plugin and you're going to make sure to enqueue the JavaScript that contains this onto the dashboards page, like the dashboard widget page. So there's a, it's not, it's not the block editor ASX hook, it's like the WP admin scripts hook, I think, but then you have to do like a check to see which actual page it's on. Um, in the code example repo, this is all in there. So you can, like I said, you can steal it and I'll just leave that up if that's helpful. Way at the back. Um, I'm, wondering, I'm wondering if, is it possible to um, kind of, if I wanted to build a plugin that shows like a tomato in front of the avocado, 
Mm -hmm. Like, is it possible to do it? Like, is there like ordering that's, uh, that you can kind of do? You brought that up, didn't you? Okay, I, sorry, so I don't know. There is no ordering right okay. now. It is based on essentially source order and the or in a queue order at this point. Um, I have a PR that adds ordering, so go there and say, I want this, and maybe we'll get it in. But basically, you're at the whim of the order in which JavaScript is loaded. Um, so if you wanted to specify, like if you don't have access to my code, there's no guarantees that your, your slot will render before mine. In fact, um, I have a, a, variation, a, a, a block variation plugin for the query loop um, block that adds a bunch of stuff. And depending on settings, the UI bounces around because it's all slot fill based. So it's a little bit unfortunate. So there is no ordering right now. The best thing that you can do is register all of your plugins in one call. Because I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but uh, sorry, in here, you don't have to just have one slot. You could literally have all 13 in here. And, and they will all be plunked in at the same time because they're all part of one render function. So that's a, probably about as close as you're going to get to be able to really control the fine-grained detail. So does that answer what you're saying? Yeah, that, okay. that's really cool. Thank you. No problem. Anyone else? Questions? Kind of to this other comment, are you able to contextualize like on your slot check, on your plugin check if another plugin's loaded and then oh, that's a good attach question. to it? So there is a way to get, so the, the plugins API actually has more functions available than just registering. You can actually get a list of all the ones that have been registered. But again, you're, that, that runs so late that everything will be registered by then. Um, so it's hard, it's hard to know. I mean, you could, you could do some checks to see if like, you know, is, you know, you could check to see if a plugin is enabled, like an actual WordPress plugin. Um, but there's not, there's not a ton that you can really do to, um, there's some, there's some limitations in the API right now. Like for example, if I register a plugin that's got 10 slots, I could not through the API Get an a get access. I can get access to the plugin that's been registered, but I don't have access to the internal slots. I, I, I can I can unregister someone else's plugin, but it'll deregister everything. So all of their slots will just go away. It'd be great if you could say I want this plugin and I want to get access to all the slots because I don't need this one and I want everyone everything else to stay. We, we're just not there yet. Um, I don't know if we'll ever get there, but because that's kind of hard to do in React um, performantly, I guess is that a word performantly. Yeah, yeah, it is today. Yeah. Questions? Cool. Okay, cool. Well, if anyone does have questions or whatever, I'm around. Please feel free to come up and tell me how crappy I did or whatever. It's great. So, thank you.